watching my live stream. Thank you for your time. Uh, it's a great investment uh, on your behalf and ours. We meet together, and when we meet together, you know the Word of God says, when two shall agree on something, great things can happen. So I believe tonight that through the Word of God and through your uh, investment of time and your, uh, I would say, persistence in hearing, that you will hear more and more, that you might be able to believe the Lord God for more and more. This is why we grow. This is what the principles are about. And as you believe God for more and more, you'll begin to see more and more of his earnest, loving heart toward you, that you might walk together, have intimacy with God, and understand the Bible principles, not all the principles in the world, there are many principles in the world that sort of parallel themselves with the Bible, but they don't have Jesus behind them. And so uh, we ask you tonight to enjoy yourself and celebrate the life of Jesus Christ in you. Amen. Uh, this week, Sunday, we started talking about, well, we talked about, we didn't start, we talked about uh, miracle power. And miracle power comes through uh, having a, a life of prayer. Uh, when you spend time in prayer, uh, you begin to see more and more of the loving side of God because as the word says, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. So as you spend more time in prayer, uh, you'll actually draw the presence of God on you because his will is looking for something to do for you, okay? So we discussed some of that Sunday. Those of you that were with us Sunday in live stream, uh, this is just another part of helping you to understand how important it is to uh, pray without ceasing, to always pray, as the prophet said, as the apostle said, as Jesus said. So tonight we're going to get into a little bit more about praying, and I, I believe that it will help you uh, as I speak righteousness and truth, not only to this congregation but to you. I believe that it will help clarify and help you to have a greater uh, connection in the spirit realm to transform and to change spiritual terrain around your family, business, your church, whatever you're particularly doing in life, because God loves you so much, he wants you to always be successful. Amen. So come and go with us tonight to uh, Luke chapter 18. And this is where we started uh, Sunday, and I'm, I'm just doing this tonight because prayer is a, a most important thing. A lot of times we get off into a lot of the other things, and uh, all of them are really based on the foundation of prayer. If you don't have a praying life, you're going to have a very limited life. Uh, when it comes to anything in the kingdom of God. You must pray, okay, always, right? And I believe you guys do. I don't know about everyone out there that's viewing by live stream, but I, the faces that I see in here tonight, I believe that you guys pray. Uh, you have to pray to stay around me. Uh, you know, that's a, <laughs> you, really, uh, you really have to pray just to hang around me for a little while and just go like, oh, mercy. Pastor, to hit me with a stick. I, I'm not trying to hit you with a stick. I'm just trying to wake you up. All right, I wake you up. For there are many benefits to you and I always praying until we get to the place where all day long our conversations in and out, the throne room, in and out through the streets of glory, in and out through the things that you're doing in earth. God's speaking to you, telling you this, talking to you. You're speaking and conversing with the Lord because prayer is not something as difficult as some people that I saw in the past made it. All right, uh, prayer is simply your open heart with an audience of one, and that's the Lord. Nobody else, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to the Lord. Unless we are doing a corporate prayer, then all of us are involved. But in my personal time, your personal time, it's a conversation one-on-one -on -one with the Lord, you and the Lord, conversation, not you just talking, but him talking back and forth. And, uh, and some people in the past, as I said Sunday, we grew up in places that people prayed certain ways so it caused us to sort of lean that away that this is how we're going to pray because we thought that was right and I'm not saying it was wrong but what God wants is an individual connection with each one of you the way he can connect with you in prayer okay and so if that uh, comes off as you know you hooping and yelling and you know and screaming that that's fine if you and God can stand your screaming you know <laughs> I mean that's fine you know uh, but that's not necessary, okay? That's what I'm saying, because I don't want to put someone, uh, I don't want anyone out there, nor in this house, to get in bondage to a certain uh, etiquette of prayer when prayer is really based on your individual heart 
unless all of us are coming together in some forms of corporate prayer for something in agreement, then we all are going to pray the same thing, and we're all going to have fervent prayer, okay? But uh, when it comes to you and the Lord, uh, you know, do the very best that you can do, and as you grow, uh, you'll grow into more. I can tell you that, okay? All right, Luke chapter 18, you guys should have a uh, long enough time. If you don't have a smartphone, uh, it, should be by, it should be there by now, okay? Uh, we want you to understand what Jesus is saying here, two particular things in this particular uh, set of scriptures, verse 1 to 8, okay? As I read, and I want, your revela I want the revelation to be yours, not just mine. You, I can help you get revelation, but I want you to have your own revelation how important it is to pray, okay? Your revelation, not your mother's, oh, you know, your preacher's, but you as an individual to be able to look into what it really consists of. You're speaking to the highest authority in the whole universe, right? And he's given us his son himself to make sure and to help us and even the Holy Spirit to clarify things that maybe we aren't even praying rightly about. But you're talking to the person who's the highest authority, right? And so he already knows all your faults. He already knows all the things about you. Just be very honest with God when you're praying, all right? He looks for an honest heart, okay? Just be honest, whatever you do, and whatever you learn. Okay, here we go. And he spake a parable. This is verse 1 unto them to this end that men ought to always pray and not faint. So we said Sunday that fainting is actually uh, putting someone else in charge or giving someone else the authority, all right? You're losing your authority when you, when you look to worrying and fainting. You're giving someone else a uh, charge over the situation, okay? And he says you ought to always pray. And uh, he goes on to give us a, a little story here. But the reason that you and I ought to always pray is because prayer is the fastest seed in the kingdom, okay? Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but there have been mothers and grandmothers and aunts and uncles and people in the past that have been in situations, and they pray, and God answered them just like that. Maybe you also, I don't know, but uh, prayer is the fastest seed in the kingdom of God. You can sow it, and in moments, God can bring miracles on the scene. And this is why, you know, you and I, Jesus is saying men ought to always pray. Uh, there are many things he could have said here, always do this, always do that. But he said men ought to always pray, okay? And he says there was in a city a judge who feared not God nor regarded man. There was a widow in that city, that, and she came to him saying, avenge me of mine adversary. And uh, he would not for a while. Now, she was an uncommon person. She wasn't just a common person. She was... Uh, he would not for a while, but afterwards he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. See, she was an uncommon person. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she weary me. So it was something about her that was different from everybody else. Y'all looking at me out there like, what? Yes, it was, because in her, in her coming, what she spoke caused him to meditate on it and think about it more so than just in the atmosphere of when she came. It began to get to him, all right? And only an uncommon person, a person who has an uncommon lifestyle, can actually speak like that and have an atmosphere about them that can cause people to, after they're gone, to continue to think about what they said. Thank y'all for that wonderful duck amen tonight. I saw a couple of heads moving like that, all right? I believe that you're getting understanding and uh, why you're listening to me. Okay, you're trying to dig into the revelation of what I'm saying so that it become yours. And that is good. This is why we have Bible study, all right? And uh, yet, um, and he says, verse 5, Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Now hear what the unjust judge said. Now just get a revelation of what the unjust judge said versus what he's getting ready to say now, Okay. Then he says this, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which he's putting God as a judge now, a righteous judge? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night to him, though, they, though he bear along with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, 
when the Son of Man comes on the earth, shall he find faith on the earth. And so we were talking about prayer Sunday and the importance of understanding that the, the second part of this is that as a righteous judge, God the Father, who takes on all three of these places, he's a certain friend of yours because when you come to him for a friend, you can pray for a friend that you have a care for and he will help you because of your friend, okay? So he's a certain friend, but he's also a righteous judge and he's our father, okay? Now Luke, the book of Luke, Jesus uh, gave the characteristics of God the Father, the, uh, God the Father, the judge, and the, uh, the certain friend through this book. Now, when it comes to him as righteous judge, okay, you have to understand that righteousness is always seeking to make sure things are right. Okay, so as a righteous judge, all right, when you come before him, as Jesus is saying here, all right, when you come before him for uh, avenge me of mine adversary, all right, somebody ticked you off, took your job, whatever, took your car, whatever, I don't know, uh, did all kinds of things that was uh, totally against righteousness. But you have to know that when you come to him as a righteous judge, the only verdict that you can get from him to cause any success in your life is going to be something that is absolutely right. Okay? You can't go to him as a righteous judge for vengeance on somebody because they did something to you. Okay? But you can go to him as a righteous judge according to the scriptures and say, Lord, this was wrong or this happened like this and I'm not vengeful about it but I know who you are. See, I don't have any vengeance in my heart but I know that you avenge us because an injustice has been done. See, that's the difference in going to God in vengeance in your heart because you have ticked off because somebody did something to you. All right? No, get the tick out of the way. All right? And, you know, always pull the tick if you got a tick. Pull the tick, do whatever you got to do, but get rid of the tick. But the deal is understand that as a righteous judge, he can only do what's right. See, and so if your knowledge of any situation that you're praying about when you come to him is based on you know what his word says that's right, you can talk to him about that. See, and as Jesus said, he will speedily avenge you. See, instead of you trying to put it in your own hands, talk to everybody else about it, tell your neighbors, your friends. Most people, whenever something goes on, the first people they call are their friends. Oh, thou, thou enemy friend. The one that's an enemy sometimes and a friend sometimes. Oh, you got some, all right? Because I've seen you walking with them. You got some, all right? Uh, you, you, you have to understand that God looks at who you hang with just as much as who you don't hang with. And so when you're talking about a righteous judge, I have to live in some way that the Lord knows who I am when something comes up, okay? If you ever read the book of Job and you read the first chapter of Job, you'll see that Satan came and, you know, and the Lord asked him, had he considered Job? This is, this is wild, all right? Have you considered Job? And then the Lord said there were six things about Job that caused Job to stand out that caused that hedge to be around Job, okay? And those six things, one of those six things was that Job was a person who did what other people wouldn't do. That's right. That's right. That's right. He did things that other people wouldn't do. In other words, he lived a very uncommon life. He didn't do everything that everybody else did. He didn't go and do everything or follow everything that everybody else followed. He had a, an intimacy with the Lord God, and he kept that intimacy with the Lord God to the point that when, when Satan approached the Lord God, God brought up Job. Does he ever bring up you? <laughs> God brought up Job. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're talking about prayer now because we're talking about miracles. Come on, go meet the book of Job. 
chapter 1. See, we're talking about miracles because people want miracles and people want all kinds of things, but you have to understand that, you know, God looks at everything about you to see if you are a, a person who, who's ready for something that's uncommon. See, miracles are uncommon. They're, 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 they're things, you're trying to get me? They're things that are, that are so out of common. That's why we call them miracles, okay? And, and I believe that in these days, that some of the things that the Lord has shared with me about time and stuff, that you're going to see multiple miracles happening over and over and over all the time. But God has to have people that have a heart and a mind. And this is why the visions and things come, because they're saying, prepare yourself for this, all right? Because this is coming. So God gives you time to prepare when he gives you a word, when he gives you a prophetic word or vision or dream, he gives you time to prepare, prepare for something that he knows it's on the horizon. So when I, when I see certain things or certain words come up, I start preparing myself for the acceptance of these things, the receiving of these things, and I have to get myself in shape to receive these things. Well, it's no different with me than it is with you. You have to get yourself in shape to receive certain things from the Lord, okay? So when we, we look at conflicts, spiritual conflicts in the Bible, okay? People that had spiritual conflicts in the Bible, all of them teach us something about, again, when I said about prayer, it's who we, who we are when we pray, who we're praying to when we pray, and also remember who we're praying against when we pray, see? Because when I go to the Lord in prayer about something, it's because there's an enemy. It ain't because we're in the Garden of Eden now. <laughs> It's because I know me, what I need, or what's going on, or the challenges of the ministry, or my family, or whatever, you know, whatever I'm involved in. But it's also understanding who God is and what he expects me to do when I come to pray, bring him what he's already said belongs to me, okay? And then because he knows that that's more than enough, just like he told Paul. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, I've already given you all that you need. All you got to do is settle in how I've given it and find out what you need and walk in that. And you don't have to ask me for anything other than that unless you need a miracle for somebody's life or something. Again, something that's uncommon. Okay? And then we have the enemy. And the enemy is not flesh and blood. All right? I'm not fighting you guys, you know, because y'all look mean looking or don't say amen or whatever. I'm not sitting up here fighting you guys, you know. I know and understand that where people come from and experience and whatever. So we always also need to also understand, again, who I am and who I am to God, who God is and who he is to me and whatever. And then guess what? Also, who the enemy is and what he's playing and what the part is that he's sharing and why I have to come to the Lord for this certain thing, okay? But again, God's looking for people that have an uncommon mindset. You want more and you're willing to do more. Not, not just do what everybody else do. Everybody else come, you know, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, but you are, you're going to never cry when you do hallelujah or run or express or show or whatever. And I'm not saying you have to show out in church, but what I'm saying is there, there ought to be something that stands out from you, all right, that, that causes God's eye to look at you, to know that, that you are uncommon. You're not thinking, why, why did he... Acts chapter 10. We, hold on. Don't go there. We haven't gotten to this yet. Acts chapter 10. Why was Cornelius picked out for the Gentile Pentecost to happen? Hmm? Because of what he did. And it says that his prayers had come up as a memorial before God. He was doing things that was uncommon for somebody outside of the, the Jewish people to do. Are you guys, you guys with me? Okay, so I'm trying to get you to see how powerful it is for you to have your own individual prayer and your heart in prayer so that when you pray, God will look at you or your family or whatever, and he'll say, that's an uncommon person. He's not doing everything that everybody else would do. He's doing something different. And because he's doing something different, guess what? If I sow a different seed, I have to get a different... Y'all hunt somebody. See, that was worth coming tonight. We can go home now. All right? That was worth coming tonight, okay? So, so I have to know who I am, who God is, and I have to understand 
that I have an enemy when I'm in prayer, okay? Other than that, you know, me and God would be tight. Everything would be fine all day long, and I would not have to be concerned about any resources. I wouldn't have to be concerned about uh, protection. I wouldn't have to be concerned about helping all the people because everything would be fine, but it's not like that, okay? So again, in prayer, you must consider these three things. You, as Jesus said, pray always. The fastest seed in the kingdom is praying. Pray always. Understand who Daddy God is, a righteous judge in this particular instance of, of, of seeking something that was done wrong, and then, again, who the enemy is. How did he cause this? What door is open? Am I doing something? Am I walking around Sinai? doing the same thing, the same thing that kept me walking around Sinai three years ago, and I'm walking two more years around Sinai. Are you with me? See, uncommon feats of, of faith are what caused the centurion to believe Jesus when he came, and he says, oh, no, you don't have to come into my house. Just speak your word. And what did Jesus say? Ain't nobody in all of Israel like this that actually understand how authority works. You know, and that I'm a person under authority as he's a person under authority. Nobody, he said, nobody under, he says, go, whatever you believe or however you believe it, go on, buddy, because it's yours. Well, see, this is what I'm saying. Instantly, when he prayed, instantly, guess what? He got results because guess what? He went right to directly to Jesus and allowed him to know, this is what I believe about you, about me, and guess what? And I believe that, guess what? I'm going to get the result that I, because guess what? I know who you are. Th this is, this is, most important when you're praying, instead of just getting down praying, you know, the same old prayer that you've been praying for 10 years and still trying to get the, the result that you need for today. How many of you need a today miracle or a today blessing or whatever? You, you ain't got time to wait for tomorrow because <laughs> you want it now. <laughs> you know, you want it now. So guess what? I need it now. Now, here we go. Check this out. Again, these are things that the Lord said about Job, not Satan, the Lord. He says, now, verse 6, now that was the day when the sons of God came uh, to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence cometh thou? And he said, he answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro throughout the earth, walking up and down in it. So you know you got an adversary, all right? And I, we just hope he don't walk by your house, <laughs> all right? And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Hmm? Underlying servant, because God called him a servant. He says, There is none like him in all the earth. Underline that. He's an uncommon person. None like him in all the earth. That means he was not like everybody else. And Jesus actually said the same thing uh, about a couple of people uh, that we're going to look at in a moment that received particular miracles because there was none like them in all the earth during their time that caused these tremendous miracles to happen in their life. And so if the principles are here, if the, picture, the pictures are here, the Holy Spirit has given us the pictures to show us the, the, the practice of God toward someone who has the ability to, to live like this, then I can tell you today that every Christian person in the world need to begin to function in the personality of having an uncommon lifestyle, all right? And I didn't get this from Mike Murdoch. I got this from the Holy Ghost. An uncommon lifestyle brings you. This is what, li listen what God is saying. Satan didn't say this, okay? The Lord said to Satan, has thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in all the earth. Then he says he's a perfect man, and an upright man, one that feareth, feareth evil, fear, one that feareth God and runs away or shuns evil. These things he said about Job, see? But the thing that we're on deals with prayer because in prayer, you have to have an uncommon faith. We've seen it with the centurion. We saw it with the Syrophoenician lady who came to Jesus and wouldn't take no for an answer. He kept saying, no, you know, the bread is for the children, you know, and, you know, and, and then he went on talking about the dogs, you know, the crumbs, and she says, yeah, but all I need is a super crumb. You know, I don't need a wonder crumb, I need a super crumb. Just give me a crumb from the bread that falls from the table. That's all I need. I don't need a loaf of bread for this. 
My daughter's at home with a demon. I don't need a loaf of bread. All I need is a crumb. A crumb from you will take care of the job. Well, see, that was an uncommon, uncommon lifestyle because the disciples had already told her no. Then Jesus tells her, you know, I'm only sent to the, to the children of Israel, you know, and she's still going like, I don't care what y'all say. I came here to get what I want. Will it take some uncommon attitude to be like that? See, to, to receive prayer from God, to receive the miracles that we need. Not just walking around, just, all, just saying what everybody else say. What everybody else say can be, it can be 10,000 revelations by the time you get it. By the time the first person got it and said it, it could be passed on down, passed on down, passed on down. 10,000 people could have said that before you got it. And here you're going by the 10,000th and one revelation. And you need light tomorrow. You know? Hunt somebody say, we got to get our light right now. <laughs> we, don't need, we, don't need, we don't need tomorrow's light. We need some light tonight. It's going to be dark in a little bit. You need some light tonight. <laughs> All right? So we see that God says this. And look what Satan said after the Lord said that. Satan answered and said, does Job fear God for nothing? You've made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side and has blessed the work of his hands and the substance is, his substance is increased in the land. In other words, because Job lived this way, God had blessed him that way. Because Job was an uncommon, had an uncommon lifestyle. And you'll read through the book of Job, many of the things that Job said, oh, I do this, I did this, I've done this, I've done this. He lived this lifestyle. It wasn't just something he talked about on Sundays or that he talked about or discussed on the job Monday through Thursday or Friday with the, with the people on the job that don't go to church, but you know they just want to pick at you because you're a Christian you're always talking about God, you know? Instead of standing up one day and saying, I'm casting out all you demons in this office. Every one of you got to go right now. And you stand up on your desk and you start pointing fingers. Oh, boy, they won't come back after you anymore. They be going like, man, elevate them, promote them, get them out of here. Give them another job. <laughs> Why? Because you did something uncommon. You didn't just sit there and let them tell you how you are, you know, what you're not, and make jokes about Christians. No, you got up and you just started... Because they started talking about thou, God, you started talking about yours. And that's what God's looking for in these days. Somebody that will stand up and say, oh, no, I live this way. I live this way all the time. This is why my house is so blessed. This is why we have what we have. This is why we can lay down at peace at night and go to sleep and wake up in the morning. We, we didn't let worry or have authority over us all night long, giving us nightmares and all this stuff. And we woke up in the morning, and guess what? We are refreshed in the Lord God. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. We don't go, oh, my Lord, I tell you, it's morning again. Well, what do you want to do, sleep, sleep for Rip Van Winkle, sleep for 20 years? You know, we don't want to do anything like that, okay? So we see that Job lived an uncommon lifestyle. And because he lived an uncommon lifestyle, God had blessed his house. But God had also pointed him out to his enemy to let him know. Look at how good he's living, because he's living right. See? And we know that Job prayed because immediately it says in, in, in this chapter, it says, you know, Job would go and offer sacrifices to God for his kids and whatever, because, you know, he believed that maybe his kids, you know, it did something wrong in their heart toward God and whatever. So we know he was always the person who lived this way for God to call him out, okay? Now, come on, go with me, too. We're going to run over to the book of Luke, okay? Book of Luke. Book of Luke. Let's see here. Let me get over here real quick. Chapter 11. Now, remember I told you in Luke, Jesus reveals God as friend, father, and righteous judge. Okay? So, again, if I'm praying for one of my friends, I can go to the Lord on the basis of what Jesus has shared to us, that he's a certain friend. And I can solicit the needs of my friends from God based on my intimacy with God and his with me for my friends. And it didn't say that the friends were intimate with God. But because you are, God will help your friend. See, again, this is prayer. See, this is not, you know, 
us just hooping and hollering and saying a whole bunch of things and quoting things that, you know, a thousand, ten thousand other people have said. This is not us just saying things, oh, by faith, unbelieving, oh, by faith. No, no, no. This is me knowing that I'm intimate with God, but he's also intimate with me to the point that I can come to him for somebody that's not intimate with him. You guys in verse 1 with me? And it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when it ceased, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said, you know, he, said unto, he said this to them, he says, and when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done uh, as in heaven, so on earth. And give us this day, give us day by day our daily bread. That's another thing about prayer when it comes to resources. We'll talk about that one day. And he says, forgive us our sins, and, uh, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend? And this is where he's talking about daddy God, his friend. Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? He better be a good friend. <laughs> he better be a good friend to come to him at midnight. I can tell you right now. All right? You know, at midnight... 9 o'clock, 9.30, we get into cutoff time. <laughs> 10 o'clock, no, no, sure, boy, I'm telling you. But you know what I'm saying? He said at midnight. So he's making this, he's carrying this to a place where he's letting you know that God is always up. See, he's not asleep. He's always up. But he's bringing him, bringing you, the character of God, toward you in intimacy as a friend. Okay, And he says, which of you shall have a friend and shall go to him at midnight and say unto him, notice capitalized friend, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine is in his journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. So it wasn't for me coming to him because I already know I didn't have anything. Well, I can come to him whenever I want to. But now because I represent him and I'm in, I have intimacy with him, then when a friend comes, the first thing a friend is, is going to want to know is how good is God treating you? That's right. They are going to be checking it out. You're always talking about Jesus? I'm showing up at midnight. <laughs> I'm showing up at midnight. You always talking about how good Jesus is. Well, we're going to have to run out and see Burger King open or something or something. We're going to run out. No, 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 no. See, he's showing us a picture about prayer. How important it is to have God intimate with us and us intimate with God. As James said, you draw near to God and God will draw near to you. Don't be somebody talking about, Lord, you know I need. No, 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 you start drawing near to God. See, you draw near to God, then God sees, and he's going, okay, but well, this person won't leave me alone. Well, they're always after me. And you know if you're running after God, you know the way he is about love. Love is an action word. You keep popping up around him, boy, you're going to get it. <laughs> you know? It's the way he is. But he says this, for a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in the bed. I cannot rise and give thee. And I say unto, ye, unto you, Though he will not rise and give to him, because he is his friend, yet because of his what? Importunity, his persistence. His persistence. You're my friend, Lord. I need this for my friends. You're my friend. You, you can't turn me down. You said that the goodness of God causes people to repent. So they need to see your goodness so that they can constantly be in a mode of changing their mind to the point they get to one day that they just say, I'm just going to run with Jesus. They need to see your goodness, all right? For a friend of mine, you know, I say unto you, though he will not rise and give to him because he's his friend, yet because of his importunity or his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Many as you need, you just keep on being persistent. As Jesus said, men ought to always pray and not to get over into worry, changing the authority of the situation. 
putting it in the wrong hands. And he says, I say unto you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that acts is receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Then he goes on to talk about a son and a father and how good God is to us as a father. See? And then he talks to him again, Luke 18, as a what? A righteous judge. See? So we have these three particular pictures of Daddy God that when we go to him based on, again, who I am and what I'm going to him for, these are the three things in prayer. You always got to remember these. What I, what I, who I am to him and what the word of God says and what am I, what am I, what am I caring to God? What, am I, what situation is going on here that I have to come to him and then I have to know how he's already addressed the situation. See, he's already addressed the situation through Christ Jesus in a certain way. So I need to know that when I come to him so that when I, when I talk to him, I'm not bringing something foreign to him as though I'm trying to get a victory. I already have victory in Christ Jesus. See, so my victory from the cross has already sustained my walk of life, not just for now, but for eternity. Your resources are already saturated in the blood of Jesus on that cross. So when I come to him, knowing me, what I need, the situation, the word of God, what I believe, my faith, your faith may not be where someone else's faith is, but use your faith. Don't use somebody else's faith. It's no good to you to use someone else's faith. Use your faith. Now, if you need somebody else's faith to help you with your faith, that's different. But don't go to him on the basis of somebody else, this happened in somebody else's life, Lord. You don't know how they were. You do not know how strong they were. You don't know what they went through. You know, you don't know how, how much intimacy they had with God. Okay, so don't go on somebody else's faith level. Go on yours. And again, now if I need that person to help me, then Lord, help me. As the father told Jesus, help me. He says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. In other words, what I can do, help me right now get to the point where we can make this thing happen for my son, all right? But don't go on somebody else's faith. Use your own and grow. And again, if you need somebody else to pray with you, then ask them in all honesty to pray with you about this. Ask them to help you because I haven't gotten there yet. Don't, don't, don't not pray because you, you, know, you figure that your faith ain't. No, 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 God accepts Listen, how much faith did you have when you got born again? Hmm? How much faith did you have? You had enough faith to step out of hell. Now, if you had enough faith to step out of hell, why don't you have enough faith for your bills? Hmm? You had enough, oh, come on now. Y'all gotta get with me. You had enough faith to believe the Lord Jesus and receive him in your heart and it caused you to step out of hell. So why don't you use your faith now, all right? Use your faith now and say, Lord Jesus, he's the same Lord. He's the same one that caused you to escape hell. He's the same one that paid, your, paid the price, redeemed you. So if, 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 he, if, I, if I had faith for, for that, why can't I have faith for other things? See, why do I have to believe all the stuff that the world is pushing at me? Again, this is Bible study for you folk that are watching on. <laughs> I don't know if it's live stream now or not. They might be the fell out somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> you guys that don't live stream, I mean, you know, uh, but this is Bible study. And, and the reason it's Bible study is because it's understanding that helps you to use something. See, I know that by stripes, we are healed. But it's the understanding of healing that helps me to manifest that in my life. You know, when something is going on, not just because I heard somebody say, by stripes, I'm healed. Oh, I know I heard somebody say that. Well, I know that's in the Bible. Some people can't even find it in the Bible. But the deal is, they heard it and they say, okay, oh well, I know that. They're, they're Christians. They believe that. It's in the Bible. By Jesus' stripes, we're healed. But, but I can't, I can't appropriate that victory without having some understanding about healing and how, it, how it's demonstrated through the anointing of God. 
I, 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 I'm missing out, you know? And so you miss out on that because my, I, I failed or I don't want to understand because sometimes people, and I've seen people like this, sometimes people who have an illness or an infirmity or whatever, they use it for attention. All right? And they're always in an organ recital. Well, Pastor, this just going on, just pray for me and my strength. Oh, it's like this, my strength in the Lord. Pray my strength in the Lord. And I'm going like, but, but you're missing it because the anointing will remove the burden and destroy the yoke. The yoke is that thing which got you tied down. It's got you tied where you can't do what you want to do. You can't turn your head. You can't jump up and down. You can't move this way. Why? Because guess what? You're not allowing the anointing to burn that thing away out of your life. Okay? It's called dematerialization. Holy Spirit will do that. Okay? So we want to get into understanding the, the intimacy part with prayer. How, how could Jesus just show up at Lazarus' grave and he says, Father, I thank you that you always hear me. He had prayed days before about this. And he says, I'm not saying this for me, for you. I'm saying this for these people that are sitting here because they're the ones that got to learn to believe. The intimacy that wherever you are, whatever's going on, you can listen to God and he'll tell you, do this or do that. Hey, son, how are things going today? Oh, yeah. oh, just do that. If you go over there, this will happen. If you do this or whatever, just think about this right now. Just, just the conversation of intimacy that you don't have to, you know, come now and, and, and you know, and address him, oh, Lord, hallelujah. You know, I mean, he is Lord, and hallelujah is the highest praise. But again, I can get into fashion of prayer instead of power of prayer. See? And we need to have the power of prayer in our life because it's the power that's going to cause the miracles to happen in your life. But you've got to be an uncommon person. Come on, go with me to 1 Kings chapter 17. How much time I got? 1 Kings. 1 Kings, 1 Kings. That's right before 2 Kings. My wife said thank you. <laughs> Let's see here, where are we? Yep, 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 yep. You guys here? Y'all there? Got your smartphones rolling? <laughs> Y'all got those six, uh, I mean, no, well, I can't say six because they got so many versions of, how many was in that book that we had that you got that time? 25 or 30? different versions. My wife had a Bible that she had uh, certain things she was doing years ago and they gave her this big old Bible that thick. And every scripture has like four or five different translations. Every scripture. So I, I have that big old Bible. I use it for many years when I'd be, instead of going and getting an amplified Bible, going and get this Bible, I'd have all, I had all these things in that big old thick Bible. The only thing about it weighs about 25 pounds. You don't want to carry it around. You know? <laughs> so I just leave it at home, you know. But it, was, it, was, it, it taught me a lot because he gave me all this knowledge of what my mentor was talking about from the Greek and the Hebrew when he would put this stuff together. And I'd go in there and look at it, and I'd see, okay, this is this, but I don't understand the Greek, but I understand English. Are you guys with me? Yeah. That's right. So you use all the helps you can when you need to pray, okay? Because I'm telling you, it's the fastest seed to success or anything else in the kingdom of God. This is why Jesus said men ought to always pray. See, fast to see. It says this in uh, oh, chapter 17, 1 first, first Kings 17. You guys ought to be there by now. Now remember what God said about Job? There was none like him in all the earth. All right? Over in Luke chapter 4, uh, verse 25, 26, 27, 28, after Jesus was sort of like kicked out of Nazareth. Uh, yeah, because he came back there in the synagogue and he was teaching. And then he made some statements to them about 
uh, a prophet is not honored in his own country, all right? And then he made a statement that got them really riled up. Now, when he made these statements, these people knew the history of Israel, the things that were written in the scrolls, because they read them constantly over and over. And so Jesus made a comment to them that in the days of Elisha, all right, there was a famine for three and a half years, but he wasn't sent to anyone except a widow in Seraphat. And the reason that he was sent to that widow is because she lived an uncommon life. There were many widows in that day. He said the same thing about Naaman. He said in the day of Elisha, there were many lepers in Israel, but Elisha only healed one, and that was a Syrian called Naaman. Why? Because Naaman did something, guess what, that was uncommon, all right? I wish you had time to look at that tonight because Naaman did something that, that was really wow. It says this, the word of the Lord, verse 8, came unto, came unto him, saying, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon. Dwell there, and behold, I have commanded a widow lady, a widow woman, there to sustain thee. Command, what's a command? It's an order in a conversation. So some way, God had already spoke to this lady. She was the only one that heard him because there were many widows. He arose and went to Seraphat, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks, and he called for her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink it. And as she was going, excuse me, it's a drought. If I'm going to get in the water, it's going to be for me. And I have a son at home, too. He may want to drink if I can find some. All right? Are you guys with me? See, you got to get the picture of what he's planning here. All right? She didn't turn around and say, are you crazy, man? There's a drought going on. It's hot. It's 95 degrees out here today. You want me to get you water? No, I don't think so. I'm going to get me some water. If I'm going to go do anything, I'm going to give me. She was willing to do what other people wouldn't do. See, when you want God to bring miracles in your life, you got to be willing to do things that other people just won't do. It says she did this. She says, and as she was going, he said, now listen to this. It's not enough to bring me some water. He called and said unto her, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, now listen now. The water was one thing, but now you want my bread. And she said unto him, as the Lord thy God liveth. How did she know? Because he had commanded her. See, before miracles happen, there's always a conversation with God about some instruction. There's always some instruction. Do this, do this. While you're going, you know, give thanks to God. What did the lepers do? It says one came back. Jesus was looking at, where aren't there, where there, how many? Where, where are the nine? What, 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 what? I mean, I said this and told them to go give, you know, the offering to Moses and whatever to the people. Where, where are they? Nobody came back. This, them guys was glad they was gone, boy. He was going, I've got my miracle and I'm gone. There's always an instruction. Peter, go to the sea and cast in the hook, the first fish to come up. Why not the second, third, or fourth? There's always an instruction in receiving a miracle. See? And we miss out on those things because we're too busy trying to instruct God on what we want instead of allowing him to instruct us in what he wants us to do to get what already belongs to us. Said this, she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a, a cake but a handful of meal in the barrel and a little oil in the cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks. That's why you see me here. That I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we might eat it and die. And Elisha said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me therefore a little cake first. And bring it to me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. For thus says the Lord. Always instruction. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, 
Neither shall the crews of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did as the man of God has said. She was willing to do what other people wouldn't do. See, how can you say that? Because God knows everybody's heart. Just like he knew Job's, he knew everybody else's on the earth. And that's why he told Satan, there's none like him on all the earth. And that's why Jesus made the statement over in the book of Luke. He says, in the days of Elisha, there was drought for three and a half years, but only one woman, one widow woman got help. Do you think God didn't want to help everybody else? But it was only one that was willing to do, see, something that everybody else wasn't, wasn't going to do. And this is the way that you and I have to think. When it comes to Naaman, we're not going to read this tonight, but when it comes to Naaman, when you read the story of Naaman over in 2 Kings chapter 5, when you read the story of Naaman, Naaman had his eyes on everything that was common. All right? He bought Elijah all the, the gifts and stuff that he could bring him that was common. When Elijah told him to go and dip in the Jordan River, the first thing he started thinking about was what? The other rivers, the common rivers that were clean, not the uncommon ones. Oh, y'all got to get this. See, he started thinking about everything that was common. Everything is in order. Oh, this is this or this is that. And God sent him to the uncommon place. And go and do the uncommon thing. Dip in that uncommon river. And it says after he dipped seven times, it says he had the flesh. Seven is the number of completion. He says he had the flesh of a little child. This is a grown man probably in his 50s or something or 60s. He's a general. And he comes up with the flesh of a little child. Why? Because he did something that was uncommon. See? And if you keep doing common things, you're going to just get common results. And this is why you and I have to have the mind that when we go to the Lord in intimacy, that I'm not just going to him just because He's there and Jesus told us to pray. I'm glad he's there and I'm glad he's waiting for us to pray and I'm glad his will is waiting to do what's necessary for my life. But I have to have the intimacy with him that I want, not just because I need him, but because I want him. See, we got everybody that say they need the Lord, but what about the people that want him? See, I want him because he is. See, that's what Paul used to say about himself. He says, you know, that's the best thing that could happen to me. I'm here for you guys, but to be out of this body is the best thing that could happen to me because he wanted to be with Jesus. He wanted to be with Jesus. And we have to want God, see, not just need him for this and that. My goodness, he's, he's wonderful. He do all kinds of things. You know, do good, dwell in the land, do good, feed on his faithfulness. You know, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Not yours or somebody else's, his. And he'll bring to pass all the things you need in your life. But prayer is the absolute fastest way. When this lady bought Elisha the water and a little cake, it took her a little time to go back home and fix that little cake. But when she bought him that cake and he ate, when she went back home and she tilted over that barrel that used to be empty, can you imagine the weight of that barrel now? Her feeling that when she put her hand on it. Because see, all she had at first was a barrel and a, and a handful. So she could pull the barrel over and reach down and get that. But can you imagine grabbing a hold of that barrel now? <laughs> can you imagine what went through her mind, through her whole fiber of her body, when she grabbed that barrel, and now that barrel don't weigh a handful, but it weighs full? <laughs> Oh, man, you, gotta, you guys got to get into this thing, man, when it comes to miracles so that you know it's not necessarily so much for you, but look at all the people in need. Look at the cries that are around us every day, the people you run into that are crying out for things. E even some people just, just to be delivered from the turmoil of the, 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 the oppression and the, and the depression, depression from the inside, oppression from the outside, that just grips some people that they... They don't even have a smile on their face as a, as a Christian. You know, 
because they're not being taught, they're not renewing the mind, they're not getting intimate with God, they're not spending time with people that have the same like faith. See, as I told you tonight, some of you may want, some of you probably have since you've been here, want to hit me with a bat or something or throw something at me while I'm up here because of what I'm saying to you. Because, you know, because when truth first comes, nobody really understood it until it came because if you know, understood it, you should have been doing it before it came. But when it came, guess what? It, 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 it brings a war now. See, a fight takes place, you know? And it may be for one round, it may be for 15. But the fight takes place when truth comes because now I have to go and adjust myself and find it like the Bereans did, go study and find it for myself. And then I have to go like, well, this is what God wants. You know, in your flesh, you're going like, well, this ain't what we've been doing. <laughs> your flesh said, we got to go get us a snip. You know, and the word says, no, we can't do that. Well, you know, the word says, you know, uh, a little for your stomach's sake. No, no, it wasn't my stomach that I was drinking that for in the beginning. <laughs> See, you got <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. Somebody over there going like, oh, why he got to go on drinking now? Oh, because you're probably an alcoholic. <laughs> and God wants you free. All right? Because you're intoxicating your faculties with that which even the world and the bars call spirits. Now, the world's got sense enough to know that there are spirits in the bottles. <laughs> then why don't you? All right? Well, thank you for being here tonight with us. We bless you guys for being on the live stream. Thank you for your time. Again, we pray that it was well invested, and we believe that as you study through the things that we've studied through tonight that deal with prayer, that you will be one of those that Jesus, you know, talked about. Men ought to always pray and not faint. Amen? God bless you, and thank you for your time. And uh, we'll see you next week. All right? Same time. We're here. We're not going anywhere. You need to be here with us so that you can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's available for whosoever will. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. All of us.